What brings you here? If you are go right up, right up that shirt. Is the mic good here? So, Aaron, when did you first learn you wanted to be a producer? <laughs> Well, I'm not actually an Oxford poet, but I studied poetry at Oxford. And I'm not a normal best-selling novelist. I'm actually a best-selling children's novelist. I write books like 100 Cupboards, the Ashton Burial series, most recently Outlaws of Time. He's my agent and now producer. And this is the story we told each other we would never tell. But because we're both very bad at secrets, we figured why not just lean into it. So back in 2008, we formed a company called Gorilla Poet. We are the Gorilla Poets. We figured we're both kind of oversized gorilla-ish. We both have very poetic feelings. And we started getting into the doc world, and most recently we have plunged into narrative feature film with The River Thief. We gotta pray hard and then we take him down, down. We're just gonna break the ice. First, <laughs> we were coming off of this trippy little stagey short film. It's called The Hound of Heaven. We did it with Hisao Kurosawa and the wheel started turning towards a production. And we're gonna tell you how this happened. So step one, Aaron lined up money. Not enough. I think you should just start. That's so wrong. We had some of the financing lined up. It was $400,000, and it came with a stipulation that we use Tommy Cash. Terrific gent, brother of Johnny Cash, all around talented and friendly guy. And slowly everything began to crumble. We didn't know when we were gonna make a movie. And we did a gear shift and Nate had a dream. I woke up, not so much from a dream, I just remember waking up with a complete script in my head. So I walked into Aaron's office and I told him the entire story. This is the story of the river thief, this homeless drifter from Portland floating up a river, uh, this kid who is just a born thief. And he robs some of the right people and he robs some of the wrong people. And then of course he meets this girl and he starts trying to steal her, but he can't and both the good and the bad people in the story pursue him to the end of the film. Then we called talent, Tommy Cash first, and we also had to call the backers to make sure they were okay with this pivot. And we, we kind of, there's a little bit of a walnut shell game here where it was like, good news, we're moving forward. It's called something different now. <laughs> <laughs> so we called an actor named Joel Courtney star of J.J. Abrams' Spielberg Super 8, and we pitched him this idea. Joel really liked the concept. I told him, awesome, we'll send you a script really shortly. The big secret um, is that we, we didn't tell anyone that there was no script. There was not. We had three weeks to actually wrap principal photography on this thing. In time for Joel to go off and uh, start filming his show. And we had minimal crew, so we had to crew up and all that stuff. Aaron started calling talent, and I, being really helpful, flew away to go to my cousin's wedding. And then that night after the reception, I got on my laptop and I typed the first words. And I would write things that then Aaron would have to go land. He didn't even know what locations or what stunt pilots or airplanes or boats he would need right up until I wrote it into the script. Aaron had promised the script to talent by Wednesday. This was Sunday night and I had a flight the next morning. So I wrote all the way to the flight, wrote on the flight, kept on typing as soon as I arrived and we did in fact send a script out while Cass was already, well, generally they were on flights there because we were going to begin production at the end of that week. It did not hit the ground running. It was brutal that first night, and by the next day I was thinking, okay, we can pull this off. So we got some bruises and some cuts and lost at least one van. The truth is we had a lot of fun. Yeah, you don't have over here. You punk? Oh, yeah. I had lived that. <laughs> Fantastic crew. Fantastic cast. All of them had had maybe 48 hours with the script. There was always something that was having to be done at the last minute. That the schedule was a nightmare, especially that 14 page day. <laughs> Four cities, two states, 14 pages, fantastic day. I won't pretend like Aaron did everything right. <laughs> we get to one scene and I look around and I ask Aaron, where's my piece of cast? Where's my bum under the bridge? And Aaron vanishes and I'm standing there. I've got actors getting restless. Aaron calls me and says, hold on, I got him. He's in the back of my pickup truck. I picked him up on a street corner. Brian S. Simmons. You're a star. You're a star, man. He showed up a little late. <laughs> not the most timely, not the <laughs> yeah, most timely uh, performer. We were delayed. Do a little bit. Fourth and a half. Fourth and a half, okay. Could not be happier with the results of our little $400,000 10 day adventure. It's not something we plan on doing again, yeah. at least this way. Uh, hopefully we'll move up to something much, much harder. Yes.
You don't want to throw that down while we talk about this real fast. Yeah. Do you like me? Girls betting on guys changing is like jumping off a bridge and betting against gravity. Hey! Hey, the girl. These run! They always run! I would give all of me to you if I just knew how. 